Okay, in previous videos we have looked at uh, relative cell references, we've looked at absolute cell references, and we've looked at mixed cell references. Uh, this is just another example of doing mixed cell references, but it also adds in an absolute cell reference as well. So uh, we're going to start up here in a blank spreadsheet, and we're going to put the words loan amount in A1, and over here in B1 we're going to put in a number like $1,000. Okay, and actually let's go up here and type $1 dollar sign one comma zero 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 and you can actually do the formatting as you type in the number rather than having to type in just one thousand and go up here and choose the uh, accounting format or the currency format um, now what I want to do is we're going to determine payments on a loan for different loan terms and different uh, interest rates so across the top here in our table we're going to put five 10, we're going to go by increments of 5 in terms of the number of years, okay? So make sure you select both of them, get your fill handle, and drag it across to column G. Uh, we'll go up to 30 years in 5-year increments. And over here on the left side, we're going to start with 0.50%, uh, half a percent. And then we'll go up to 1.00%. Uh, and those are the first two. Now I can use my autofill feature and we'll go all the way up to 10% here. Okay. So what I'm going to calculate here is, and let's do the same thing here that we kind of did on the other one. Let's format our column and row headings a little bit. Uh, we'll make them bold and we will make them blue and we will also put a thick border around them and we did a little bit of shading before too so we'll do a little bit of shading too okay so uh, what I want here is I want to put and let's take these numbers here and let's uh, center them okay so what I want here is I want um, the payment uh, the monthly loan payment on this amount uh, if I'm doing five years at half a percent annual interest rate okay so I need to put a formula here that depends on this number this number and this number this number never moves so it's going to be an absolute cell reference uh, this number here though uh, may move across but it's always going to stay in row three so that's going to be a mixed cell reference where the three never changes and this number here uh, is going to be similar except the a is the one that's going to be unchanging in here so I have to put a dollar sign in front of the a okay now, how do you find the payment on a loan? Uh, there are some built-in functions in Excel. They are all on the Formulas tab here. And uh, the one that is green, the color of money here, with some coins on it, is all the financial functions. And there's quite a few. And they're in alphabetical order. We need to scroll down, and we're looking for something called PMT. There's another one that's pretty similar that has two P's in it, but we just want this. And if you pause the mouse, it tells you, calculates the payment on a loan. Okay, so click on PMT, and one nice feature of Excel is it comes up with these function arguments, uh, the function arguments dialog box for you, and these are all the things that we need to know to be able to compute the payment. But notice one thing. Um, these last two labels here for the last two arguments are not in bold, and the reason for that is these are not required. If we don't put anything in there, it will use a reasonable default. In this case, it uses zero for both of them. Uh, these are required though because they're in bold, so I must provide the rate. Okay, well the rate is going to be this number over here, A4. Okay, but the column A is never changing, so I said you need to put a dollar sign in front of that. And also that is the annual rate, and we are doing monthly payments, so monthly payments you have to have the monthly rate, so I got to divide that by 12. Okay. Then I need to know the number of periods. Well, that's going to depend on this number up here, okay, in B3. Now, the column can change, but row 3 is never going to change when I'm doing that. So I need to put a dollar sign before the 3. And that's the number of years, but I'm making monthly payments. So if I'm doing 5 years, that's going to be 5 times 12 is 60. So i got to multiply this by 12 to get the number of payments I'm actually going to make. And the present value in a loan is the number that you are borrowing, which would be this number up here. That number never changes. It never moves. So we can press F4. That's our keyboard shortcut to put the dollar signs in there and make that an absolute cell reference. Click on OK. And we get $16.88. If we get our fill handle and copy that all the way down, 
uh, let go, take our fill handle and copy it all the way across. And there we go. Now, uh, it makes sense that the longer you spread this out, the lower the payment's going to be. So uh, with the interest rate being the same here, as we go to the right, the numbers should be decreasing all the time. Uh, as we go down, the interest rates are going up, so these numbers in each column should be increasing a little bit every time. Now, you might be wondering about the red numbers and the parentheses, and red numbers are used to indicate negative numbers, and parentheses are also used to indicate negative numbers. Uh, apparently, Excel wants to be doubly sure that you recognize that these are negative numbers. The payment value in that's produced by the payment function is always a negative number. And we're not going to go into why that is. We're just going to accept it for uh, this video. Um, if you don't want these to be negative, uh, all you have to do is uh, put a minus sign in there. If you put a minus sign in front of a negative number, it makes it into a positive number. And then take this number and uh, fill it. Whoops. Fill it all the way down. And then get your fill handle and fill it all the way across. The numbers will be the same except they will now be black and they'll have uh, no parentheses around them so it makes it a little bit easier to read. So we're just about done here. Uh, I'm going to make this num this a little bit wider so we can see loan amount and I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to put some headings up here at the top. I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to my home tab and I'm going to merge and center that and I'm going to put uh, the word years in there and then I'm going to take that word years and I'm going to format it using my title format which is big and blue and you know if I wanted to I could even make it bold come on there we go and then over here on the left I want to put a label for all of these cells too so I'm going to do a right click at the top of column A and tell it I want to insert a column there and uh, I'm gonna, this is going to be uh, annual rate Okay, so type in annual rate, and I want it to be merged and centered in all of these cells here. So we're going to do a merge and center as well. And this is one of the times where you may want to rotate your text here. So I'm going to angle, uh, I'm going to rotate it up like that. And then I'm going to uh, center it vertically as well as horizontally. And I might have done this in the wrong order. Let's see what happens here if I go and add. Nope, it still works. If I add the title format to that now, I was concerned it might go back and, and make it horizontal again, but it did not. And since I made this one bold, I'll make this one bold as well. So, and let's just do one more thing here. Uh, let's take all this stuff and let's put a thick border around it. And let's go up here and let's make that a label as well. We'll make that a small heading for label and uh, we're good to go. So now if you pick any place in here and double click on it, uh, the first term is blue and it's always going to be from column B. Second term is red and it's always going to be from row 3. And the third term is purple, it's always going to be this number up here. It doesn't matter where I click, I just hit escape now. And I'm going to double click on another one. Uh, the blue number comes from over here, the red number comes from up here, and the purple number comes from up here. And you can click on every single one of these. I've got, uh, how many do I have? I've got... Uh, 18, no, 20 cells going down and uh, six cells going across. 120 cells, you can click on all 120 of them and they will always point to something from column B, something from row three, and that number up there in C1. And that's another example of using mixed and absolute cell references in Excel 2016.